with my Etudes book promotional practice sessions. Um, the second video here is going to be in the key of E minor, E blues, or we call it. Um, by the way, the book is right here. Let me see if I can pick it up. There you go. It's a mock up of it. Um, you see that? You can print it out yourself. It comes as a PDF download. It's a pretty cool cover. Um, and I got some comments in the first one. The first one we did was G major. The second one here is E minor, which is related to G major. What does that mean to those laymen who don't know this stuff? It means they share the same notes, but different tonic notes. So E is going to be the tonic of all the chords, or the overall key. So let me play the scale first. If you're following along in the book, um, this is, I don't know what page it is to be honest, 14. And that was the first two measures. It runs through the scale. Now it's a super easy, easy zone is a term I've coined. It has open one, three, open one, three on the DNA strings. Open one, three, open one, three. For, and all this is training for improvisation. So when you're improvising, um, you can use just those two fingers and a couple open strings and you're off and running and you can jam till the cows come home. It's pretty cool. But let's try and work it. We, this book is all about getting your muscle memory ready so you don't have to think too hard when you do it. Um, of course, you can go all the way across first position. Follow me if you can on measure three. In all these exercises, I start out by just running through the scale in different ways. Um, I often do some single note stuff. Now the blues ones I favor. It's it's you get a lot of mileage out of them, and they end up sounding more cool right away than the major ones. I think. Well, let's start measure seven. Follow along. It's E and D. Try it. Easy, right? The same few notes in measure A, triplets. Do, 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 try. Again. Already starting to sound cool, isn't it? On the A string, measure nine. It's the same thing we just had on the D string. Um, try it again. Go. One more time. Measure 10, check it out. Little twist there at the end, 3 1. So, uh, 3 1 0 oh, 1, ready, go. So, mix this stuff together. It's already sounding neat, isn't it? All right, now we don't have to go too far in this stuff. I, I think with the comments, people were not looking for me to be um, reciting the whole thing. That could be another video, I guess. Each page in this book could be a video in itself, I guess. Let's just to jump ahead. After a while, I use those two things in cross strings that I just did. We get to some easy licks. Measure 21. Here's one. It's a two-measure one. Rest. You recognize it? It's lift, rick, uh, the, the lick from uh, I love rock and roll. Put another jam in a jukebox, baby. Um, let's try it again. Ready, go. It's actually the end of that song. All right, let's try measure 23 on the A string. Rest. Again. Again, if you don't have the book, you can kind of follow along by ear. You can look at my fingers in the video. You can try some different things. Um, even if you do have the book, it might be okay to just try and see what you can catch by ear. It develops your ear as well. That's why I, I try and repeat each one of these. 
Measure 24, one more riff before we go on to the, the uh, intermediate level stuff. Is it four, three, low two? Again. Doesn't the blues stuff sound cool right away? At the end of the uh, page one, there's a bunch of patterns. You can practice those for good finger exercises. And as the template for all of these lessons of the whole book, the second page of the intermediate page is brings in the cool stuff even further. The, the flat fifths, the devil's note um, is one example. Measure 33, the first measure of the second page of the E minor exercises is... Is it flat fifth of E? E, F, G, A, B, B flat. Again. Next measure. Again. I tend to slur the notes that are slid also. So you slide the bow and slide the finger. You should be able to do that in both directions of the bow. And in these books, I did not stress bowing really much at all. I suggest you make up your own bowing. I only suggested that you slur on these slides. I would su highly suggest you try starting things up bow and down bow so you get kind of a good uh, mechanics of movement and all these things. Now all these same notes is E, G, A, B, D. can be anywhere in the violin as we went over earlier on other strings. And we can do this on measure 35 on the G string. <laughs> Flat is a flat fifth down there too. Again, go. How about measure 36? Gonna slide up right away. Again. This is up in the E string too, this flat fifth. Measure 37. You can slide that around as much as you want. This is the blues. Again, go. All right, right over if you know how. It's not a big deal. I measure 38. We come off of that. Again. If you're doing this by ear and giving it a try, don't be dismayed if you don't get it exactly. Rhythm is the most important thing oftentimes. And... Uh, you can pick up by osmosis as you go. Or get the book. It's pretty cheap, only 20 bucks. You can download it right from the site. Fiddlejaminstitute.com in the store. Um, famous riffs. I'm jumping ahead now. Measure 45. This is one of my favorites. Saxophones, players, guitarists, all love it. B flat, sliding to B and D. It's the flat fifth, the fifth, and the flat seventh. Isn't that a cool riff? It's a classic. So let's try it again. Measure 45 and 46 together in the book. This is one of the few that are a two-measure riff. Ready? Go. Again. This is the stuff you need to know if you want to play rock and blues. How to slide around, how to get the in-between notes, the cool stuff. Let's jump ahead. Um, down lower we add the second note of the scale, which normally is not a blues scale note, but you can throw it in for a little sophisticated spice. Um, it gets closer to what's called the Dorian mode at that point. Um, this kind of fills it in. B.B. Uh, King would use this note sometimes when he'd solo. He'd come up to that, that second note. Um, what I just played was measure 55. Try it with me. Ready? Go. Now putting an F sharp is not as cool, but it's kind of cool um, if you mix it in. Do, stuff, do your own thing with these. That's what this whole book is intended for. Vocabulary. 
for your fingers to know without thinking what the cool stuff is. You're not going to learn this in the classical world. Um, another note you can add is the sixth note of the scale. Um, this is also in the Dorian mode. Um, jumping down to measure 59. A little bit weird note sometimes, but it's not too bad. Again, at 59. Let's do one more of those. Number, measure 60. There's me. And the ninth, or the second note, as it's called, and the sixth note, or the thirteenth, as some people call it, is um, a little bit of sophistication and filling things in. Measure 60 again. Ready, go, now. Again. Okay, now we actually get to the Dorian scale. So these videos don't get too long. I'm going to jump ahead. Um, so if you haven't bought the book, you can check out see what it covers. The third page is always more advanced stuff. It's in the double drones, double stops. Um, ooh, do you hear that? Owl outside that window here. That's pretty cool. That's a sign. Um, double drones are the most important. I'm skipping down to measure 73. Fourth finger E. And together. Hear that? The open E and the fourth finger E. Two different tones, same exact pitch. There's only three of those on the violin you can do. Double A, cool the slide, and double D. In fiddling music, they're very important. They're definitely in the minority of notes you could possibly play on the violin or the tricks that you could do. Here we're exercising it. So we're working up to it. And I'm measure 73. Four, open, double, again. Stay right there, freeze, measure 74. It's okay to slide that pinky until it matches. You might practice that slowly. Remember what that feels like, remember what it sounds like, and listen to your fiddle as you play it. So that's good stuff. Double drones. Uh, parallel fifths we can do. It's not as important. Down later in the third page, I always get to the crazy stuff. Just to challenge anybody, even an experienced classical player might stumble into stuff a little bit. As you see, if you're looking at the book, there's a lot of black stuff. I think it's fun just to try it. Let's go slow. From measure 88, I'm going to play. If you can play along, great. If you can listen along, fine. If you can uh, make stuff up similar to this, that's fine too. Correctly, actually. Eighty-nine. Again. Be careful whether it's a low two or high two in the B flat or B natural. Measure ninety. Oh, I forgot that this one was in here. This is one lick. I try to be an open channel when I play and improvise and just play whatever my inner ear is telling me, my inner spirit is telling me what to play. Hopefully taking dictation from the angels is always the goal. But this one riff is one that I actually ripped off from another violinist. And it's a violinist most people have not heard of. Eddie Jobson, who played in the fusion band in the late 70s, maybe early 80s, uh, UK. And was a keyboard player with them too. Later played a short stint with the band Yes. Um, he played with a solid um, electric uh, violin that was a solid hunk of, of plexiglass carved out of that. It had to be extremely heavy. I met him once at a NAMM show. He was a nice guy. Um, but this is one riff I said, wait, what was that? And he, in his solo, he I actually stopped the record back when the records before CDs and flicked up the needle and tried to relearn learn this one. It's a cool riff. And he did this thing, he was like, what? And this is, can fit in this key. Can fit, the riff can actually fit in a bunch of keys, but here is a measure 90. And I ended 
did with a blues riff. He did that, but I put in my favorite riff that I stole from somebody else. Yes, even though that's not the coolest thing to do. It's all right. Everybody steals from everybody else. It inspired me, and I learned it. I'm sure I picked up through osmosis some other riffs from other people, but check him out, Eddie Jobson. Um, measure 91. at the end. I'll do that one again. Ready, go. Here's the sliding thing in measure two. Again. Double drones and sliding into them. That's great in fiddling. Uh, measure 93. That's a tricky one. It's jumps positions. Now, if you're not very advanced, you don't know positions, that's okay. You just slide your hand up. The second position would be so your first finger is where your second used to be. Simple as that. And you got one extra note. But I do this riff sometimes when I get in a solo and I need a pattern. And yes, it's a little bit thinky. I reserve my soloing formula to include 10% of cheese, as I call it, one of those pre, pre can licks. As I lift in some of my heroes, Michael Brecker, who actually is. Signed that violin right there. That's the only autograph I've ever asked for. Michael Brecker signed the back of that fiddle for me. And uh, God rest his soul. Anyways, he would do, as I listen to more and more of his records, he would be pretty much a channel, but have some riffs that he pulls out of his butt every once in a while. That's what we all do. So anyways, this one. It's three, low two, then open string, E, while you slide your hand up, and then it's E with the third finger. And then a with the second finger on E string. The pattern. Shift, shift back down. Shift back up, back down. When you're going fifth, kind of cool. And sliding like that's easier than doing all this pinky stuff. All right, uh, the last two measures is always the crazy one. I'll go slow 94, 95. slow. Sorry about that. I'll try it again. Go. B flat. B flat. Now, in the first video in G major, I never went to the fourth page. Yes, there is a fourth page of each key that I work with. Today we're working with E minor, and there's groove toots. And these are little, um, they're longer than one measure. They're, they're a little bit of a patterny thing. It's, it's two or four measures, maybe, that if you get them repeated until they groove is the idea. Actually, put these things to use. Let's try the first one as an example. Um, and again, this would be intended, you might want to practice it with a drum machine beat. On the site, there is uh, drone tracks. Some of them are just bah, drone, like a droning, like, uh, you know, for Indian music in the background. And all 12 keys, I have that. And I also have them with a beat, a guitar strumming and the, -chick 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 the drums going on. So you could do either those or any of them or make your own. Uh, put on something in the key of E and let it drone. Here's here's the number one groove tude in the key of E minor in the Etudes book. Again. These are ideas I just come up with to give you some experience and get in the groove. And it doesn't have to be fast, it just has to be steady and feel good. Um, let's look at one more. There's seven of them on this page. Um, how about number six? I'm jumping down. It involves a double drone thing. So. Well, 
Oop, my finger almost fell off the string there. Try it again. First measure of number six. start over. Let's go a little faster. See if you like it. Ready, go. Again. So that gives you an idea of what's going on in the E minor section of the Rock and Blues Fiddle Jam Etudes uh, book that we have for sale in the store on the site. So I've gone 21, almost 22 minutes. That's plenty enough. I better cut the camera now before I run out of a juice here and hope these things help you. Leave me some comments and practice along and happy jams. <laughs>